Jesus then reveals himself only after he had come up to the Jews and only after the Jews had confronted him. Only after all this had occurred, he came up to him and said, you have been healed. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. You can't go for 38 years of being an invalid. You can't go from that 38 years and then be healed and not be thankful and not try to live a life other than you should. Stop sinning. It wouldn't be too long after that that the man would be able to believe. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am also working. For this reason the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he's even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. This was an instance where Jesus really started to get on the nerves of the Jewish establishment. Where he really started, where the seeds were beginning to be planted for his crucifixion down the road. This was part, this was just part of that buildup amongst the people. He broke the Sabbath. Jesus said, my father is always working. He was saying who he was to the Jews that was blasphemy. To the Jews that was blasphemy that he could dare call God his father. They could dare put himself in that position. They didn't consider any of his miraculous signs. It wasn't enough for them. He healed a man, but they were mad at him because he broke the Sabbath in their lives. Jesus was serving, and Jesus was serving as the Son of God. He was serving, and he impacted this man's life 38 years in invalid. Laying by a pool, his last hope that he may be able to roll in first. He may have told his friends, put me at the very edge so I can just splash in and still not be the first one. That hope. But Jesus gave him a greater hope. Jesus gave him a greater hope because the Son of God himself healed him. Jesus Christ revealed himself to the Jews that day, telling them who he was, but they wouldn't see. Jesus says elsewhere, though seeing, they do not see, though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Jesus tells them who he is. Make it mad at him for it. The plot begins. It builds up and it builds up. Evidence is built. If you ever watched a crime show, that's what a large portion of, of the show is about. Gathering the evidence. Gathering the evidence. The next incident. The next incident. The next incident. And when you actually get to the court trial on this one, it's not that pretty. But it's enough. It's enough for Jesus to be convicted, and Jesus to die. But Jesus serves as the greatest sacrifice for us because of this. Jesus put himself in this position on purpose so that he could die for each one of us, so that we could have hope, and so that we, like the invalid, could be healed. Not necessarily always a physical healing, but sometimes. Sometimes he'll give us a miracle. Many times, for some people, we get a miracle. Little or big. We receive these miracles. And Jesus may walk up to us. Or he may hear, stop sinning. Serve me as I want you to do. But even more so, even more so, being taken out of, of, a, of a life that is not with God. His dying on the cross allows us to be able to follow him and to have a hope that we couldn't have otherwise. A hope that we couldn't hope to have in any other way except through his death on the cross. Because we have a debt that we cannot pay. But Jesus Christ paid it. And that is a hope that is wonderful for us. That we do not have to stay by the pool. We don't have to live in that life. We don't have to be waiting every moment saying, 
please, please let me be the first one. Instead, we can know that whether we're here to heal physically or whether it's in a much greater way, that we do have a hope and we do have a Savior. Amen. Let's say it together.